Good evening. It's Wednesday at 9 p.m. This is the What Not Podcast. It's been so long. I apologize. I'm Mike Z. Hey, Mike, do this and shake the cobwebs out. It's only been a month. <laughs> Let me just. Uh, yeah, there, there we go. go. There you go. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I am Chris, if you didn't already know, and uh, I did it the wrong way again. Got Mike Z sitting over mm-hmm. here and Miss Marla White down there below us. I'll get it in a minute. There she is. MW Painter, if you're not familiar with her, you definitely need to go check this young lady out. She's got some cool stuff, and she does a little bit of everything. So welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, we're glad to have you here. We always like cool people, and, uh, well, I've been following you a while, and you seem like a cool people, so we wanted to have you on here. Thank you. You know what's great is that I get I, I, we hear that a lot is that that intro reminds people of Game of Thrones. I've never seen a single episode. I have zero clue. I know I'm the rarity out of the bunch. I get it, but at the same time, I know certain shows is just ah, not for me. And so I find that really funny that I have no idea. So there you go. That's interesting cool. for you. For those listening at home, if you missed it, uh, we'll play it. Yeah, we'll play it on the podcast start now because we are now on all of them. Yeah, well, here you go, Boy. Mike. What you need to do is just uh, go out there and search. Game of Thrones intro and just listen to the intro. You still don't have to watch an episode. Oh, there you go. Good call. Hey, that was smart, Chris. Hey, I'm here for you. Anything I can do to help you avoid any problems. There we go, John and Michelle. Good evening. What not is? Man, it feels so good to be back. Feels weird. It's been like yeah, a month. It's like, uh, it's like we have to start all over and learn everything again. So uh, we're people who have a day job and then we have a podcast in the evenings. <laughs> Should we do a reintroduction at this point? Yeah, and uh, you know, life gets in the way, and you know, and uh, that, that's that's over. You know, life and everything else is just the anyway. We're no longer in the past thirty days. We're in today, that's episode right. thirty. That's right. And, so, Marla, the, thank you. Yeah, and uh, so we're so excited. Marla's with us, and I'll tell you what she. If you ever just go check out her stuff, I mean, like every post, it's something different. I mean, she's just she's random. She's got her hands in all kinds of pots. So we're just excited to learn a little bit more about you. So you, you got enough information you can talk to us about who you are and how you got started? Yeah, I'm Marla White, and I've been in the uh, – I love I love to do a variety of things. I, I love to have – I pretty much got to admit it. I was a tomboy growing up, and – I did not want to be one of those females that did not know how to take care of their car, their house, their plumbing, whatever. I wanted to be able to do what I needed to do. And I'm more of a mechanical construction type person instead of a, you know, I love computers too, but I'm more of a hands-on kind of person and not the kind of lady that would want to sit in an office all day there you go i'm not the kind of lady that wants to sit in an office all day either so that makes us uh pretty good friends i guess yes you know, connor's like, dead yeah yeah work life work more work yeah glad to yep. see your yeah. internet's working thank you yeah it's gotten better yeah so i know we've got a photo in there somewhere of you, like what in the mid seventies, I believe you told me you had your yeah. fancy little carpenter belt on, and oh, here we go. Here oh, yeah. he was ready oh, to yeah. work. Oh yeah, I was working on a rabbit hutch for a pet rabbit that I was about to get, and uh, so it was one that I had gotten from my grandmother. She lived actually, I lived way across town, and now I live closer to where she was, and. I had to cut the legs off to get it in the minivan or wagon or whatever we were in. And so that's me trying to build it back together, put it back together. Well, so clearly, cool. clearly you have been doing some form of woodworking and construction since the seventies. That is amazing. You started woodworking when you were two. Uh, I was about probably, <laughs> Two and a half. Uh, maybe eight. There you go. 
but no, that's, that's awesome. So, so you started off and you can do, like you said, you didn't want to be one of those people who didn't know how to do anything. So clearly you, you do construction, you do carving, you do, you do not only like regular painting like that, but you also do a lot of hand painting too, don't you? Yeah. I also wanted to be a mechanic at one point in time, well, but I don't have any photos of my mechanic career. That's because there's a lot of cussing going on. You don't have time to grab a camera. <laughs> I was a lot of 10 when I yeah. wanted to work on a car. By the way, that chain necklace you were wearing, that is off the chain, Marla. I like that. Thank you. Thank there you, you very much. This it is, is cool. Basswood. And there should be a photo in the file of where I started this out of a square rectangle block. Mm -hmm. And I, I use the bandsaw on part of it. And then the rest of it is just all knife work. Well, that's a lot of knife work. I would drill holes. Because, you know, the lengths are like, kind of like that, mm -hmm. with a little space. And I just use all kinds of different tools to make it come out. And it's one of the first things I've done. And you'll see on that wall of doodads, I can point out what I did first. That little box if you can zoom in that's all i got i got this but i don't i can't zoom in oh okay sorry that's no, okay but from uh left to right or right to left depends on you got the um the big fat chain and then you got the neck chain and it all kind of goes in order of, according to when i made them and they're called whimsies. Uh, they're old school whittling. That's what I started out doing before I started doing any spoons or any other projects. But I'm always uh, was making things that I need or designing things I need. I, I just I love to be hands on. Well, I'm just yeah. glancing at that one photo sort of at the bottom left there that, man, that you've got some serious detail on the outside of that little rectangle. That's that's really cool. Which one? Uh, it's about the fourth, fifth item over at the bottom left. Oh, the, is it the one with all the chip carving in it? Yeah. Yep. That's chip carving. Is it bad that's that it reminds me of one of those nutter butter cake. things? It's chip carving on it that's pretty good so is this a display of like left to right so you have the chains to the spoons is this more of a display of of your progression in whittling that and my favorite things that i wanted to keep like one-offs first time on mm -hmm. doing a certain thing like that one that's on the top Tenth, tenth one down from the top, on the top row, the tenth one across. Remember that uh, game called Knockers you'd play as a kid? Mm -hmm. That one and the other one on the bottom shelf that has two little rattle looking things next to the chip card box. Both of those were inspired by that. That's cool. Yeah, I like seeing the fact that you started integrating spoons and then spoons started becoming a thing and then they became their own thing. Like, I kind of like how you can catch that evolution of your carving and your inspiration throughout this whole wall. Thank you. That's like, a cool, that is uh, cool. cool timeline. That's a little, yeah, that's timeline. A little more spread out there. Uh, go back to yeah. that last photo. That big thing on the far end was my most complex thing i it was like the third thing i ever made hmm. on the top and we have a 
We have a question that we normally ask our wonderful guests if they are team roundover or team chamfer, but I think JP of Fox Hall Woodworks has summed it up by your skills are way above that question. And yeah, we won't be asking you that question because it's like spoon or chain or ball in a cage. Unless you, you can up. hand carve it, I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah, we got to up our game. Yeah, well, I, you know, you can show some of my other woodwork, the toolbox and the, and oh, the we'll, jig. and let's see, toolbox. There we go. Let me go to this view. That is an easy swan plan that I bought, that I built, and that's where all my carving tools stay. My I think carving was a, box. This, I think nope, there was sorry, another that photo one. that was, yeah, there you go. It showed it open. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we we don't like to talk about Izzy on this show. <laughs> why not? What's what's the problem? What did I miss? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um. Well, I, well sorry, we don't like to talk about Joel on this show because he gets <laughs> upset because his <laughs> and and that he might oh not know gosh. this. Check out a few episodes ago when we had the whole. Uh, uh, maybe I've maybe. said too much podcast on and, and Joel was having internet issues as well. And uh, his sounded a whole lot funnier than yours did Marla. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So uh, let's see, let's go back to, all right, let me, let me check out these real quick here. All right. We'll just get, cause I mean, uh, you supplied so many wonderful photos of everything that you're doing. So this is a bandsaw with a cart that you made to go outside? Yes. I I live in a garage apartment, apartment above my family's house. And since I don't really have a workshop anymore, I'm what they call a fair weather woodworker. Uh, if the weather's nice, or even when it's not right nice, as long as it's not raining, I'll go out and do my rough carpentry. And as you can see, part of the project and when it is trying to rain that's the example of me working just a, underneath what little hangout i have so i can do a little bit of work while it was raining well the a lot of times the carving i guess you can do the bulk of that inside I do but... the bulk of that at my workstation in my apartment let me ask you, how do you like that Rikon light? Do you find it beneficial? Yes, I do like it. Actually, that's not a Rikon light. I'm not sure what brand it is. Um, I can't remember what brand it is, to be honest. Oh, I thought, um, okay, yeah, you're right. It doesn't say Rikon. I thought it did say Rikon on it. No, it still no, looks like a nice gooseneck. Extra. It's a magnetic base. It's hmm. extra. So it was one I bought at my woodworking supply here. So Gina would like to know how you came up with the design for the toolbox. Well, it's an easy swan design. And so I bought his plans and I built it from his plans. So, so what you're saying is you came up with the uh, idea to build the toolbox based on somebody else, which is fine, but you made it your own. You made it your own way. Yes, I made it all strictly by hand on the bandsaw and no no automated tools whatsoever as far yeah. as CNCs or anything like that. Yeah, take that yeah. easy. Yeah. And see, I I love I love the fact that a lot of these folks are are now putting a lot of their plans online because that does make it good for especially especially woodworkers who maybe don't have the ability to draw things out and, and be able to get things to a certain scale or a certain size. Yeah. It lets them just build and, and gives them a project right out of the box. Uh, what I call uh, ad abilities. I, if I draw, I do it old school. Like um, one of the, projects I'm working on now. I'm going to flip around. I grab pencil and paper and do it old school. Yeah, I, do I, it I still do that too. You know, I don't have any other way. It's faster. Yeah. 
I wanted to learn some of the stuff. I wanted to do some 3D printing and some other things, but I I do what I can with what I have, and I'm I'm blessed to be able to do what I can. Uh, do you see the question here? How long does it take, or how long does a chain take to make? Uh, depends on how long you talk about. Let's go with the one on your one neck. Like this. Yeah. It took me over a week or more because I didn't do it all at once. You know, I'd do it, lay it down, do other things, and then pick it back up. So how many hours do you think you have maybe total in that? Roughly. 20 hours. Okay. This gives them an idea. So if you started production, you could do two a week. That's all. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, Actually, seriously, I'm 20 sure hours. It's probably a lot longer than that because I'll do it. I'll carve it for an hour or two, and then I'll go into doing something else, and then I'll pick it back up. You know, some days I'll, I'll work on it for several hours at a time. As uh, I am on disability, so a lot of these things I do, are my hobbies to keep me busy so I don't go mm -hmm. stir crazy in the house. It makes sense. There was a, when I used to work at a, our retail store that uh, for our day job, the one of the, there was an older gentleman that came in and, and he had what he called his uh, doctor pack. And I said, okay, you're going to have to explain what that means. Well, he had, he had gotten cancer. And so he was constantly at the doctor. So his doctor pack consisted of a, a, a large handkerchief that he rolled up and it had his knife inside there. It had his project inside there and it had all the chips and shavings from him whittling inside there. And so oh, he, would, cool. he, would, he would sit down in the waiting area and he would unfold his handkerchief down on his lap and he would carve and whittle and carve and whittle. And if his uh, handkerchief got too full of chips He'd sit his stuff down and go dump the chips in the trash can at the doctor's office, go back, sit down, and and keep whittling. And he would go into the doctor's office and do the same thing. He said, so every waiting room he was in, he was un undoing his thing and folding and uh, carving right there everywhere he went. He said, so it didn't nice. take him long with as many doctors as he had to go see to <laughs> carve something out you know, pretty quick. And he did a lot of chains as well. He did little, little small uh four or five links and then had a spoon on the end or had some kind of dangly yeah. something on the I end. I have so. what they call pivots, pushers, balls. You know, I got a variety of all that. And I'm always, I take, sometimes I'll take people's design and I'll think how I want to do it and I'll be creative and I'll do it a little bit different mm -hmm. and make it my own little twist, you know. Um, well, that puts your put your spin on it. Yeah, I put my spin on a lot of things. Um, you know, I don't always go exactly word by word on a on a design, and I'll I'll learn from watching different people on YouTube. Uh, I read books uh, and just think oh well let me do this to it and maybe this will make this step a little bit easier mm -hmm. than the way they showed you or because of the way my mind works well that looks harder let me do it this way because it's easier to me that way and, and that's, that's that's awesome yeah i don't always get to do that you know but i also have to modify uh, if I go by plan and they say use this and this and this and this to actually do the work, well, maybe I don't have that tool. Mm -hmm. So I have to either create, make a tool, or make do with what I got and either do it in a shorter time or a lot longer time. It just really uh, depends. And... Uh, yeah, usually if I'm trying to go off a set of plans and it says uh, four hours and I say, well, you know what? If I did it like this, it would probably be easier. I can turn that four hours into 10 in no time. <laughs> yeah, I've done that too. 
I've done that too. Spent about an hour just looking for one drill bit or the 10 millimeter socket. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we got a question here. Uh, Miss Gina would like to know what kind of wood is best to carve with? This is basswood is the best wood to carve with. And then there's what they call butternut. And let me get you a sample of that. I like how everything's right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If we hear any loud noises, it's just the the wood rack being shifted. Just going to say, just taking a look at it, is there a Pez dispenser on that shelf? It looks like the Coca-Cola Polar Bear Pez dispenser. No, I have no Pez dispensers up there. Okay. I'm hungry, apparently. <laughs> But this is butternut. It's in the walnut family. So these are the kind of woods you can carve dry. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have green wood. But I am learning to do a little bit of green woodworking at that too. And sorry, if oh. I don't have things set up correctly. Now, how do you like working with Tupelo? Have you ever worked with Tupelo? No, I haven't had my hands on Tupelo yet. Yeah, uh, my understanding Tupelo is a little bit easier to work with than basswood because it's a little less grainy. Really? But okay. I've, I've never carved I know on that it. A lot of bird carvers and fish carvers, I think. Like that, you know, like the duck decoy mm -hmm. people prefer Tupelo. I'll have to give that one a, a, a try. And here's some of the projects. I'll what I do is I'll bandsaw a project out mm -hmm. to a rough carving. Like some people we use an axe to do their their carving. And then I go into using hand tools. Yeah, nothing wrong with uh, reliefing that out a little bit, getting it more prepared for your hand stuff. There's no sense in wearing yourself out trying to use all hand tools. Yeah. Just like this is going to be a cup. What are, oh, what are those things called? Couscous. I can't Couscous. pronounce it right. K I can't either, so you did better than I did. Uh, K U S K A. I think if I said it right. Yeah, because we had Chris Stenson on, and he he had carved one like that, and uh, I remember asking him. I was like, is, "I'm sorry, say that again." Like, I still I, I get it. I understand. It's like a Swiss or a Swedish type of cup right? for a wooden mug. Okay. So that's that's when you're getting into that level of carving to where uh, that that's a lot of work right there. To get down yeah, deep and but it's I, small. You know, a lot of people that are into green woodworking, they'll do it strictly with an axe to this point. Hmm. But I rough mine out with the bandsaw to this point. Because that's... Cool. And then I start drawing on it. Well, for all the non-Roy Underhill people out there, there's not a thing wrong with the bandsaw. That's right. Now, for our friend... Uh, uh, from Appalachian wood, uh, Woodwork, he might disagree a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, where is good old Gerald? He's probably forgot about the show already. <laughs> How many projects oh, do you uh, work on at once? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. And I've got a ton of blanks. And... Just to show you what I bandsawed out about two or three weeks ago. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of box. A bunch. And they're all different projects. Well, it looks like you come prepared for boredom. So if you get bored with one project, you just move on well, to the next one. Yes. And also... 
I got knee deeper into it because of COVID. Mm. I'm so, not out running around running errands. I'm doing the the ever clerker Amazon and everybody else, and I did not want to get it the disease. Hey, while you're down there in that box, could you grab out one of the uh, tools with the leather sl uh, sleeve on it? Because I'm looking through the sheath. photos. Oh, sorry, sorry, sheath, sleeve, whatever. Gus, gus. So you, I, I was looking through the pictures and I don't see them. It may not have uploaded, so I apologize. But you made these. Yeah, I love working with leather, and these are just simple. A lot of people will go through and actually hand sew, but I just did these out of pure necessary of using the leather contact cement and rivets. Sweet. But I'll wet mold them to whatever tool. And if people cared how their sheaths looked, they probably wouldn't write on them <laughs> like I do. <laughs> well, you gotta know what's in that there. Way, right? I know what tool's in that sheath. Yeah, because I was just looking to see. I don't see them. I see the before. Your selection of cards. Now, okay, so this picture that we have on here now, is this your go-to selection? That was selection? my beginner set of tools. That was probably the first four months of carving. Let's see. I see flex cut. I see some Ramelson. And uh, some field. Okay. And then an exacto knife. There we go. You're pretty well covered. Um, my favorite is flex cut of the tools. Pretty much, I love their knives the best. Yeah, they make a good uh, make a good tool. I like their steel. Yeah, I really do prefer their tools. Now, if there's a a, a tool that I need that they don't make, then I'll go to Phil or Ramble Center. You know, they have a pretty good collection of tools. Mm -hmm. So, what are we looking at here? Are these square scoops? Yeah, they're bandsaw scoops. Uh, that's another idea I got off the the interwebs and YouTube. I forgot where I learned it, but you cut that U shape out, and you use that center core, and you slide. You slide it to the end and you glue it and you bandsaw the handle out and that's how you Well that's slick. I had never seen those before. Doing that. And then you got bandsaw boxes. Yes. I hand carved those little knobs out of butternut. Well of course you did. And then the boxes are, are just pine, white pine, at the big box store. Yeah, we won't name any names. <laughs> but let's see here. What else we have? Okay, the fish or shark, I guess. It's got a top fin. I don't know. What, what do we got here? That's a fish. Okay, good. That's a fish, and that's all basswood. What do you like to finish your pieces with? Well, it depends on what it is. If it's a fish like that, then I use a aerosol can of lacquer. Okay. And then if it is, let's see, a spoon. Okay. If it's a spoon or a scoop or or something like that, I'll use what they call salad bowl finish. Mm -hmm. Or I'll use a uh, something called I'm uh, starting a new thing that I use it's called tried and true and it's uh beeswax and linseed oil okay Lit. so it's the original formula that's that's some good stuff right there uh nice. how yeah. do you, so curious how do you apply it what is what is your your method of applying the tried and true finish I just started using it so I just use rags you know soft lint free rags and rub it on and let it sit there and 
stew for a little bit and then I rub it off and let it cure for two or three days and then I, I rub on it. And it doesn't really give a shiny, shiny finish unless I do probably, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I just started using it, so I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm, I used, uh, my first food grade finish that I used was General Finishes Salad Bowl. Or mm -hmm. the finish. Okay. And that's what I would use today still on like cookies and stuff that I needed a waterproof type to seal the, the wood grain, you know. So Compared with... To, with that, there's a question that I noticed, and that's why I kind of was leading up to that. Is it dishwasher safe? No. Okay. No, it's just not recommended on any woodwork to do dishwasher. To dishwasher. So just hand wash only. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, it would not come out the same way you put it in. I've, I've, I've seen people do cutting boards in the dishwasher and up. Has not come out the way it went in. <laughs> nope. Nope. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, so they would be good scoops and uh, sugar flour salt scoops. And then Mr. Yep. Pete C wants to say hi to you. Hi, Mr. Pete. It's nice to meet you. So let's see. We've been in construction, we've done chains. We've done scoops and spoons and bandsaw boxes and I mean your your list just keeps growing. There's feathers. Hmm. A quill. But I really uh, like my the main job for years was a painter and drywall finisher. Pair work. I used to work that is actually doing some Houston flood relief work. I went and volunteered and did some uh flood relief with my Christian congregation down there and that was a real job that was that was making money back in the day before i got too sick to be out in the field working all the time and then let's see oh yeah so it'd be the same thing yes that okay. just happens to be a friend's house that he bought a house and and his family moved and they were like a spiritual family to me and so you know i did i did work there for him let's see him. and then scroll sawing i did that is from the 90s and wow. that is plexiglass that i am scrolling i used to make name plaques and things like that i used to try to have the, i can't remember the name of that outlet place but they had a uh out the place when they had back in the in the early 90s those craft fair stores that you'd go in and I, I tried to do that for a while and so so you were making acrylic signs before it was popular on uh instagram yeah originator so, so you guys will say you were an originator yep well i not really. I mean, other people did it too. It just was not a. Back in the nineties, Instagram web was not that popular. Heck, we were lucky to have a camera we could take an instant photo with without having to take it down to the pharmacy and get it developed. So when whenever people are like, you know, why don't you have any pictures of your work? I didn't have a lot of money to take pictures and get them developed. Like today, you can just take it with your phone. You can have two thousand of them. Back then, it was like I have twenty four pictures. I better make them count. And I hope they yeah, came I mean, out. That, that's an old film. That's an old film what scanned in. And then that one of the rabbit hutch is an old square picture. Hmm. Old scan in. A little old Kodachrome, little Kodak film camera. Probably one of those throwaways back in the day. Oh, I remember that sound of that thing. So what is this? This is an art artist sketch i wish i had a better photo of it um that was me being a spray painter when i was spray painting a lot what does it say on there i can spray it better yeah okay 
I think that's what it says. And that is one thing that I really enjoyed. That was one of the most um, toughest projects that I started to learn to do was making folding spoons. A lady named Jane is uh, from Britain, Britain spoons. Uh, France, it's a France thing. Mm. And uh, so I made a bunch of those. And I always love to challenge myself. Now she does, according to the book and everything, you ax them all out and you use ax work. I, I did mine with bandsaw, of course, and then the rest of it with hand tools. Hmm. And those are nails that you cut and make pins with. Oh, that's cool. I was going to ask you if that was the you know assembly process or if they actually were part of the finished product. It will be, but you cut the you cut the nail the, the the right length, and then what you do is you on either side you have a block and and you ping it like a rivet, make hmm. it like a rivet out of it. That is creative, and this is the same thing just on their sides. Yes. Okay. So I'll basically, grab you're. That, I'll grab that book for you real quick. Sure. I'd never seen a folding spoon, so that's all new to me. But that is cool. Looks like you know something I... uh, would require patience, so it's not for me. Yeah, I agree. You know what I really like is that every one of her photos, there's another project behind it. <laughs> yes. I, I Did you that. notice that? Like, you know, as we look at the spoon, I'm like, there's a chain with a key, and there's like three chains with keys. Good gracious. <laughs> Marla, you got so many projects at any one given time. Okay, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw this uh, question out there. It's kind of like how many um, how many gumballs are in the jar? How many okay. how many things do you think you've made? Let's just let's just knock this out. Let's say since the two since since 2000. No, I didn't start till 2015. Well, fine then. Well, since 2015. Are you about the chains or, or just anything? In general. In I'm, I'm going to go with in general because there is this picture from the 90s. So you were making stuff way before 2015. And there's a stack of wood behind you. So you clearly yeah. have got more things. <laughs> <laughs> more projects. I was telling Chris, I don't know if you heard it when you walked away, but it seems like every time I open up a picture, there's more projects behind the project that we're looking at. Like you always have something going on. Even back in the nineties, when you look at this one, there's wood pieces cut. They're ready to yeah, do something. Those were blanks for, for names. <laughs> they were already drawn. I was trying to go into a production type mode, setting those up because I was trying to, you know, make product to, to stock in the, in the store. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to say something. If you're one of those who's just listening to this podcast, you're you're going to have to finish listening, but then you're going to have to go somewhere where you can watch it on video because the amount of stuff that this lady has done is just unreal. And to understand the projects behind the projects behind the projects, you're just going to have to watch this because it's yeah, just Yeah, because there's projects stuff. behind projects in the pictures. It's it's quality. Maybe I can't sit still long enough. Maybe <laughs> I got ADHD. I don't know. It's just I, I get I get excited about something, and I'll get creative. And then, oh, and then a new magazine will come out. <laughs> I, 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 I do wood car. You know, I, I buy the wood carver magazines. I buy books. I'm like... Okay, wait a minute. Let's try this. If I have the wood, I'll try something else. All right, so let me ask but, this. That book you have right there, that is the one for the folding spoons. Yes. And this is the lady that wrote it. And she is a famous uh, spoon carver. She's on Instagram. And her website is Chatta Quilt. Chat, uh, Chatty Quilt or Chatta Quilt? 
Chattaqua C H A T Q U I L I T dot com. Okay. For those listening at home. Thank you, my my eyesight. And I cannot remember her IG handle. Well, look at that. Well, look her up under that name. Jane McElbrough. I can't say it. I'm horrible with names. Just McElbrough. So McElbrough. That's why I didn't even try to pronounce it. But you know whose name I'm not horrible with would be tonight's sponsor, Mr. Kyle Ely with... Wait, let me scroll through all these pictures. Hold on. LearnYourCNC.com. If you're looking for Vetrix software and learning how to do more with your CNC, LearnYourCNC.com. Kyle, thank you for making it. Happy birthday. Yeah. And if I you're, would uh... love to learn CNC, and I would love to have a spot for CNC. You know? Well, they, they make them small. You know, I'd love a CNC and a, and a, a 3D printer, but I... As I say, I'm on disability, so um, I have to watch and budget what I do each month. Let me ask you this. Do you have a Patreon or any way for people to be able to send you some money to be able to buy these things to help you along in your journey? I mean, I I can't imagine anyone listening wouldn't think, you know what? I want to see what she does with a 3D printer because now I want to see what you do with a 3D printer. Uh, well, if I had one, I would start with already made projects because I have no way of designing my own projects. So a lot of it would be um, probably getting help from other designers of kind of like that, that inventor person that will invent and think of it and may make it out of cardboard, but someone that can do the other part I'd have to have them do the part and then I would print it because I can't, I don't. Sounds like a collaboration project. That's what I was thinking. Good call. Yep. That means you, uh, you reach out to people who do that kind of stuff and you collaborate with them and you both get sort of promotions and talked about and all that. Yeah. Cause I, I, I mean, I, I can think of things and I can kind of rough sketch my ideas. But I don't, I've never used SketchUp. Uh, I've never used, uh, uh, what's that other one? Fusion 360. Yeah. Fusion, Fusion 360. There's that, and there's one other one, Mm -hmm. I think, too. And, uh, I just haven't done any of that particular type of, of work before. Doesn't mean it doesn't interest me, but, Living in a very small apartment that houses your kitchen, your laundry, your bathroom, and your sleeping quarters, and trying to store everything is not very fun. I think we need to we need to get you to a shed to go outside so you can store all the fun stuff out there, yeah, like I'd all the tools. A, I'd love to have a workshop, but I would have to get permission from family to have a workshop out there. Oh, I'm sure we can pester them. We got enough people. In all the times that we've done this, Marla, just so you know, there's so many comments. I am having a hard time keeping up. So we've got, um, we've got woodworking ADD, and this is probably like 20 minutes ago. This is how far back I am. So I apologize. Uh, Pete would like to know, do you just look at it and make it, or do they come with instructions? Incredible work. I'm guessing it's the folding spoons. Again, I'm behind. The folding spoons is a total instruction book, and there's like four or five patterns, but she also has a diagram to teach you how to draw your own patterns. And that's a that's the same thing with wood carving illustrated any of them i use mostly patterns um let me grab you two other books okay sorry i don't have nothing set up the way it should be but no it's perfect it gives me time to find more pez dispensers (laughs) 
I see. So, so see now I'm questioning. So I see the strop, and then the Pringles can. Is it functional or is it full of Pringles? Hmm. It's my snack can. So it is full of Pringles. Not full. <laughs> some in it. Yeah, Mike, it's, it's a, a snack, snack can. can. What 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 chip can that's a snack can is full? Come on, man. Some of us can't get past the first five chips. Our hands are too big to go in the container. We got to slide them. But that's how I got a lot of my inspirations. But my first inspiration is when I was young as a teenager and was do a lot of volunteer work. There's this person that had that that did it. And so I would thank you very much, Scott. Um, I would see all his carvings hanging in the van. It's like, boy, would I love to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't get started back then because I was so busy with work and everything else. I didn't have time to get into it. And this is another book on whimsies. So in the other book you had, it was um, Whittling the Old Fashioned Way. Is that what it was called? Yeah. This is book one, and this is book two. Okay, and then that's Whittle the Whimsies. Uh, I just so people who are listening at home, they, uh, How to Whittle the Whimsies of Yesterday. But they're, they're Jack G. Jack D. Jack Johnson. D. Jackson. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm... You're I need cool. To so here's what I'm wondering more. is I'm so used to a visual mm -hmm. instead of podcast. I apologize. No, no that's worries. Don't worry. This is both really. So I mean I'm just I really I never had a think about the it. old time way. Is there a new time way? I don't know. There is. It's yeah, called that... CNC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The automated right. way. Well met. No, but getting back to answering your question, I don't have, out of out of respect for the government and being truthful, I don't have Patreon or anything like that because when you're on disability, you have to respect the laws. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I do. You know, I, I can't do a whole bunch of other income and and this and that and so i do what god would want me to do to be truthful okay and i try to keep to that well and you're clearly maximizing that to its potential yeah, absolutely now, now here's a reason why we suggested you leave that articulating arm hanging down in the in the photo alex asked a question is that project hanging behind you wood dragon you wanted to know what it was no it is a camera jig in that photo it's a camera jig and it is designed by woby designs it's one of his plans and I, like i said he made it off of CNC, but I did it old school. Bandsaw. I just took the patterns and did it with the bandsaw. Is it the same Wobie design that made the folding staircase for his shop and the spray booth? Yes. Under? Yes. Yes. That explains the design because it looks similar to that. If you hadn't checked him out, he's <laughs> he is uh, maximizing every single inch of that one square, 1,000 square foot shop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome what he's doing with that shop. And just so you'll know, my logo, those were actually wooden paint brushes that I carved. Oh, wow. Um, since I used to be a painter, I follow a bunch of painters on Instagram, and we would trade paint brushes, and I, I, I would get real brushes, and they would get wooden ones. They wanted uh, wooden ones to hang <laughs> from their car mirror, like people would hang on dices on their car mirror. Well, they wanted to hang wooden, wooden paintbrushes. I like it. 
Connor's daddy said, uh, don't worry, Marla. I'm not set up the same way I should be either. Yes, all of his tools are still brand new in the box, never used. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no such thing as a full Pringles can, says JP. No. It's got use and ask, is it half full or half empty? The uh, Pringles can. It's more than half empty. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be. A... There you go. And then uh, Kyle says he has a really old Pringles can of paintbrushes. That's a good place to put them. Oh, there's a good question, Alex. Do you have any time lapse videos of you carving? Not time lapse, but if you look on my Instagram account, there is what I call little mini videos of me carving. I haven't posted any more of those. And yes, I'm guilty. I do have a YouTube account, but it's basically there to watch everybody else's YouTube. And I haven't learned how to upload and do stuff. It was, you know. Well, if you got these videos on Instagram, if you still save them to your phone, it's it's pretty easy. There's an app called YouTube Studio, and that'll take care of everything. You just upload what you already have on Instagram. And people will be very interested to find out more through that platform if they wanted to. Yeah. I do most of my work through Instagram just because it's way it's easier. Yes. 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 And, I, and if you haven't gone in and, you know, just through this episode, if you have not gone out to her Instagram and check that out, shame on you because and her account is I, full of stuff. I love Just like her shop. nature photography. You can see a lot of that. Sunsets. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I went to college for that, matter of fact. Not nature photography, but photography in general, because that's another love. I love being... <laughs> you do. You've got so many things. <laughs> I love it. So how did you get into painting, then, if you were into photography? You mean house painting, not artistic painting. Well, I see. I she don't categorize that it that way. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, how did you get into flipping the brush instead of flipping the shutter? How's that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually flipped the brush before I flipped the shutter. Dang it! Well, that was a short conversation. <laughs> Take that, Mike. <laughs> That's it. I'm all out of questions, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I did both of them. <laughs> you know, at the same time. Well, not the exact same time. I actually called an action shot, Mike. Yeah, that's how she got good at Instagram. I get it now. Because <laughs> uh, I used to work for a college. I used to paint for a college. You know, uh, okay. I was in the maintenance staff. But I also, before I even got that job, I was my first. Ever job ever was a vacuum cleaner mechanic for commercial janitorial okay. company. I, I, I think we could we could probably ask this and it would be easier. Okay. Is there anything you haven't done? <laughs> you, yeah, you could there's probably... a lot. I don't I haven't done nursing. I'm not a doctor. Have you ever put a band-aid on your finger because you cut yourself carving? <laughs> AKA you're a nurse. <laughs> you have enough knowledge for me. I'm good. I'll go with it. All right. So as the vacuum, this is to me, this kind of, it, this is great because one of my first real jobs, I guess, was working in a vacuum store where I repaired vacuums. So I get this part. What, uh, what did you do as a vacuum mechanic or repair? Well, I worked for a janitorial company, so I maintained their vacuum cleaners for the all the different, you know, and buffers and certain things like that. I would change out the capacitors and things, but some of the bigger equipment we sent out, but they're just regular uprights. I did them, you know. I don't know, something about women and vacuum cleaners, they think they can vacuum up rocks and paper clips and everything else. And, Constantly busting the, the bottom frame and the and the, the fan blades that do the sucking. Now, so see, if, if either one of us said that to our wives, 
we would we would not be here now. We would both be in the grave. You can get away with saying that, and that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> what is what is the craziest thing you found in a vacuum? Uh don't remember that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, somebody decided to, they brought it in and they wanted warranty work and they said that it stopped working. So when I went to tear it apart, um, apparently there was a, an aquarium that broke and they decided to vacuum up all the rocks and everything while it was still wet. <laughs> oh no. And, um, and this is Arizona, so they let it sit for a little while, I'm guessing, because when it got in, it, uh, all I could smell was a fish place. It was horrible. I was like, why don't we just go ahead and just call this even? Like, we'll just, we'll just give you the warranty. Here's a new vacuum. I didn't want to touch it. That was bad. But so, yeah. Hey, I don't have, you know, who do you share stories like that with? I've seen holes in the side of, you know, because with commercial, it was commercial jobs. It wasn't residential so who knows what they were picking up but i could find paper clips and you know and they we would put magnetic bars on the front of them oh to catch it to try to help catch it because they you know because i i that was my first job was a custodian after that and um so i can understand they're in a hurry Mm -hmm. And I was a custodian at the college before I was a painter because I was a contract employee um, with the custodial contractor. Not the one I did the vacuum cleaners for. It's another time. But um, they're always in a hurry. You got to you gotta hurry up. To go to the next classroom or hurry up to go to the next office. You know? Time is money. That's That was always the saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any battle wounds from woodworking? Oh, yeah. Battle wound right there from an axe. I got another one there that's almost healed. That's why she uses the bandsaw now instead of axing things out. She <laughs> Actually, I was trying to... Oh Lord, dad Save joke of the year. On a cherry tool. Alex says just whittle ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that was beautiful. <clears throat> you you'll fit in nicely here. Oh yeah. That's fantastic. Oh my oh, goodness. My goodness. All right. Well, let's, I didn't realize the time. So let's take a look at we got the folding spoons. Don't want to miss anything. Here's the up close of the wall. Now, those are um Go back. Okay, one second. There you go. That's a, a pivot. That's a, a... I want a pointy picture, and that don't work. Sorry. Um, I'll get a pointer next time. That is a good point. No pun intended. That, sorry. Go ahead. Um, that middle one next to the spiral is a ball, a plunger, a pivot and a donut ring. We're okay. So, is this a challenge? No, because that's several different things all in one piece. Like, that's pretty only, cool. The only thing missing is a spoon, it's inside the ball. Well, one of them's got a spoon on the end of it somewhere. I think it's hold on. No, oh, yeah. Well, those that's a chain, but. Anyways, oh, I like the cardinal on top of the spoon. That's slick. Yep, that's a Gene Messer. Uh, that was one of my first YouTube uh, guys was Gene Messer. I loved watching his uh, videos. And so why aren't you making more videos? Uh, just hadn't done it lately. Well, I, I really think that, um, you know, I think it was Alex who, who had the comment. It was a really good idea to do the time lapse on it. If you have that jig like you do, and a lot of the videos you have on Instagram is over your shoulder kind of point of view. If someone was standing behind you watching over your shoulder, I'd drive Chris nuts with this camera angle because I think it's great. Most people want to see what you're doing, but they don't want to like look right over your shoulder. So having a camera there is great because you don't have that feeling like someone's over your shoulder, but they get that same uh, presentation that they want. 
Yeah, I, I need to do some more mini videos, and uh, I need to get better at it. Um, but like I said, all I got is this little workspace, and so I get chips on my floor, and I got to clean them up. Well, it's Marla, right. here's the deal. You don't have to have a super professional audio video setup to be popular on YouTube. With what you do mm -hmm. and as cool and crafty and different as your stuff is, you could just throw stuff up there all shot with your phone and everybody would love it. They they don't they're not they don't want you to be professional. They want you to be real. And that's what you yeah. are. You're real. And yeah. that's one of the reasons why I like following you on Instagram is because every time you post something, it's it's just something cool. It's something different. It's, and, I, and I'm like, is there anything this well, woman doesn't I do? Just, oh, I do stuff old school, you know. Mm -hmm. I see camera people need to see that. the latest way of trying to do a, you know, when you're by yourself trying to carve with two hands, you got to have a camera jig. Mm -hmm. No, that's a great, uh, that's a great idea. Oh, what are the square scoops used for? And I think it's these. Just count. I did them for fun, for look. That littlest one might could be used in the other one, but the great big one was just, Kind of like a Jackman idea. How big can I? How big can I <laughs> cut it on my four inch, ten inch bandsaw? Oh that's no, a is it, that's a dog food scoop for a Labrador. I was, yeah, I was thinking like snow cone. Like if you had to make ice cream, that'd be a great scoop to have ice in. You know, because my throat on my bandsaw is only like four inches, hmm. three and three quarters, something like that. Of course, it's ten inches from the blade to the support arm but you know I, that is oh no oh, there we go say that one more time it cut out for us what are these uh contribution boxes for my christian congregation that's, that's nice cool. Yeah, we made it this whole show, and your internet just now finally started acting up. So that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> you, um, I'm guessing you carved the bottom of this box to have an X in it? Yeah, that's a bowl. That's the other side of it. All right, so what power tools did you use for this? Uh, bandsaw for the outside, and what I did is like these. Hang on. You need to get a chair with wheels. Well, I do. <laughs> There's shavings on the floor, Chris. And just roll everywhere. I use a Forstner bit. Ah. Uh, there you go. There you go. I and like I it. use a, a drill guide. I don't have a drill press. I would love to have a, a drill press. There's several things I would love to have. But I would have to figure out where in the heck would I put them. What you do is you build a you build a flip cart, and you put the drill press on one side and the bandsaw on the other. Because you've got hmm. that little bench top bandsaw, you can make a flip cart, and just flip them. There you yeah. go. And the flip cart would be on wheels, so it would roll in and out. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, it, I know how you like designs, uh, Fisher. Uh, Fisher's Woodshop. He makes. He's got a design on one that's the most. It's the most unique and cool designs. flip card out there, and you and it's very easy to make. My first one I made out of a an old wood woodshop uh, woodsmith plan back in the yeah, mid nineties. I need to make a flip card. And see, I even wanna... if you made the flip card, that would be. See, we there's a lot of comments about how that would be a very interesting channel. Hmm? How that would be a great idea. Here, here's the thing is that a lot of people struggle with what content to have and just by the pictures that we see, that should not be a problem for you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Plus all the stuff you got going on in the background whenever you're doing anything. So that's, and what's really nice about your channel would be is that people would see that you have other things on the bench. So they know, Hey, that's coming down the pipeline eventually. And whenever you feel like doing it, there's no rhyme or reason to a schedule. Just whenever. Well, maybe I will start doing YouTube. I just, I just 
have a hard time like figuring out how to manage more than one platform i mean because it would be me so i do good just to monitor instagram and respond to it mm, and if i gotcha. got a bunch of videos going with everything then i'd be more busy with social media than i would be getting projects built that's yeah. a problem many of us suffer with right now so maybe instagram's the platform you should work with yep. you've already got a good following there at least igtv and mm -hmm. well it's not called igtv anymore it's just video i'm so old there. school yeah <clears throat> i don't know why they changed it but you know it's like anybody with facebook or any, i mean it's like anything uh blue paint anything you get you love it like your green beans or your or your sausage that you like why do they change something if you love it <laughs> freaking leave it alone leave it alone well, this, is, this is going to open up a door we ain't got time to go through marla <laughs> But it's true. What, you know, I guess it's the old person in me. Hey, I like this design. I like this can of food. Don't change it. Mm -hmm. and don't get rid of it. So I can keep eating it. You know what? Pringles thanks you because they haven't changed their can design in decades. They're the only chip company that doesn't sell you air. Yes. Yes. That's and when you're done, their uh, their containers make great storage for other things like paintbrushes, Kyle. Yes. Uh, you know what some people do? They'll stick their rollers in it. Mm. Their paint rollers overnight. That's a good idea. Stick it in their fridge too. Nah, I don't ever stick my brushes in the fridge. That's what Walmart bags are for. <sighs> okay, so let me ask you this as a painter. Why don't you put your brushes or rollers in the fridge? I just never have. I just seal them up and leave them on the job site overnight if I'm doing the same color. But if I'm not, I don't like to leave my stuff sitting around much. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, when I did commercial work at the college and all we had was a beige color, yeah, I, you know, I, but on the weekends when I wasn't there, the equipment got cleaned up on a Friday because I wouldn't want to leave it. All weekend. All weekend. You know, it's just. It'll gunk it up, you know. It just yeah, too many days. It definitely becomes a problem. You know, I prefer to. You know, sometimes I would clean them over every night, but I had gotten to a point since I was using the same color all the time on campus. I didn't do that, but yeah. You know, well, Marla, we want to thank you very much for an entertaining evening. And, and well, you're very welcome, and thank you for learned a I lot. Hope I, I hope I satisfied everybody's needs and wants. I I think with everything you got, we've covered all of woodworking tonight with you. So yes, um, that there's no lack of coolness to you and the things you make. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah, it was it was a lot of eye-opening stuff because i don't think i've ever seen so many projects at one time but they're gonna be complete <laughs> and i say that jokingly but at the same time it's good to see that because you're gonna stay busy mm -hmm. you're gonna have something to do you're always constantly moving well, and, and the creating reason I stack up a lot of them is it's like i said i can't leave my tool i don't have a shop mm -hmm. so any of my big tools that i need to do the rough out and I got a nice sunny day. I'm gonna do a bunch of rough outs if I got if I got wood to do it. Yeah, fair weather. I mean, that makes complete sense. I mean, that's why I got a whole box of them now. I'm not gonna make a whole lot. Um, thank you very much. 
Yeah, while you're over there, don't forget to hit that little follow button. I'm sure she wouldn't mind having an extra follower or 12. And, you know, just let me know. I will I will check you out and approve you. I, I used to have an open account, but I got tired of nonsense. So I closed my account back to mm. a, approval status only. What, you're not interested in Bitcoin? <laughs> That's what it all seems to be these days. It's nothing but, hey, I'm an official Bitcoin person or whatever it is, some sort of cryptocurrency. I'm like, nope, not going to let you follow. Well, I, I, won't I restrict had other, it. other things I'm not going to get into. Oh, all works out. But yeah, no, it's just uh, I, I locked mine down for a little while. I had too many people stealing stuff. And I was like, yeah, uh, you know, those who follow and you're in, then I'm good with you. You know, you can check it out more and stuff. But... No, I understand. Locking it down sometimes is uh is good. Keep the riff you know, out. So much, uh, the only bad thing about that is a lot of companies that you to you do contests with prefer it to be open. So that's mm-hmm. why I kept mine open for the longest. I'll I did- open it for a week. <laughs> I'll leave it be. Check my Facebook Messenger. It's fine. Oh, you know. Uh, but you are a very talented lady, and we thank you for joining us and and keeping the content coming. So therefore, everyone can see it and enjoy it. Because you're gonna, there's gonna be people that are gonna be hearing this after the fact, and so they're gonna be wanting to check out M W is in Marla White Painter 2013 on Instagram. And the reason it's that is because I used to be a full time painter, and all my friends from way back in the day knew me as a painter. So. I've thought about separating, having a personal and a and a craft. I don't, I don't want to have to have three or four different accounts. <laughs> I agree. To keep up with, so that's why my nature photography is on there. My crafts are on there. My when I used to do work was on it. You know, it's just it's Marla and White. Nothing wrong with it. It's you. So and, it's you. Uh, and you, you were in the middle of everything. So I, that's awesome. Yeah, again, Marla, we appreciate it. And and if anybody's got any questions and or comments after the fact, and you and they drop them, if we can't answer them, we'll reach out to you and say, hey, this person had this question or comment, and uh, and we'll we'll get an answer. And uh, if nothing else, go ask her yourself. I mean, you know, go to MW Painter twenty thirteen on Instagram just and just uh, me. yeah, let yeah. reach out to her, Pastor. So. Great pieces. Can't wait to see more. Thank I think you. You're, I think you're going to have a, you know, maybe one or two followers. You, you've, you've gotten a lot of views tonight for sure. Like this thank is you. awesome. So congratulations. And thank you for being on our whatnot podcast. Well, thank you for inviting me to the whatnot podcast. I enjoyed it. Did you have and, fun? Uh, I love to share my love and my craft. Well, was it stressful? No. Okay, because I know you were worried you 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 were it was going to be all this or that. I told you it was just conversation with friends, and that's uh, you you've got a whole bunch of more friends in the side column there leaving you comments. So, you know, we're just here to hang out and chat and learn about you, and we have. Is learned there a any lot. way for me to go back and reread stuff? Oh yeah, it'll be it, it's so every platform is showing up on here, but you can go back to YouTube or Facebook and see all the different comments. You can either see them in real time or you can just see them all as relevant. So you can see all the comments so and then I can answer go back them. And rewatch mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the you can also answer them too. About. Yeah. Feel free yeah. to chime in if there's something that we didn't answer here tonight. You know, chime in there and answer it. Just comment, leave it away. Sure. sure. So since it wasn't as scary or as stressful or nerve wracking as you thought it was going to be, who would you want to put in your seat for our next podcast? Well, I would have to think about that and spin the wheel and yes. see where that lands. You should do that on Instagram. You should make it live. Spin the wheel and say, suckers. I challenge <laughs> so-and-so to go on the WhatNot podcast and sit in the hot seat. And it's very kind and nice hot seat. Well, good. Good. I'm glad you had a good time. Well, we want to have fun. We're all about fun. We're not about being serious. I mean, you know, Mike's cat even appreciated you coming on and 
joining the podcast. Yeah, it's 1018. She's like, what are you doing? Pet me now. Yeah, okay, I get it. I swear. Anyways, well, on that great, fantastic note, uh, thank you again, Marley, for joining us. Everyone for commenting and watching tonight. We had a blast. And, uh, we, and oh, what was, hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta do it because this was the best comment I think I had seen. Marla saying that it's more than half empty. That's how we're going to end it because that was her Pringles can status of fullness. It's more than half empty. <laughs> that was great. All right, Marla, thank you again for joining us, everyone, for watching. This is the Whatnot Podcast. I'm Mike Z. I'm Chris. And this uh, is. Marla, what? We'll Perfect. see you next time. Hey.